I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. 2020 Volvo V60. T8 Polestar engineered without launch control. It's all right, I guess. It doesn't feel too fast. What's the horsepower and torque? 415 horsepower, 494 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter twin-charge four-cylinder with a hybrid battery. Okay, do you think all those numbers added up are what the actual number is, or is it just some fancy math to make it look better? Let me just yell some numbers at you to explain why this doesn't feel like it has almost 500 pound-feet of torque. This has 328 horsepower from the gas engine, 87 horsepower from electricity, 317 pound-feet of torque from gas, 177 pound-feet of torque from electricity. I think what Volvo did is just add those numbers up and you can't do that. That's not how this works. You can't just add those numbers and get those maximum outputs because you don't get those numbers in real life. Okay, so what does this feel like in real life? Like a 3.3 liter G70 or a Kia Stinger? Yeah, pretty much something like that. Like almost like a C43 or something like that. Okay. But, but weirder than a C43 because of the power delivery. Yeah, because there's a supercharger, a turbocharger, and it's plug-in hybrid. Yep. But what's cool about it is if I click on my drive mode, I can go to pure eco drive, which can put it into full electric. And you've got a little gauge thing that shows you when you cross the electric threshold into the water droplet threshold. Which what, is actually the gas. oil droplet? The oil, <laughs> the fossil fuel. So you can get about 35 kilometers of pure electric. So it's about 21 miles or 22 miles, which is pretty good. So I think I've already made my assessment of this car. If you think of it like a sports car, you will be disappointed. However, if you think of it like a really cool plug-in hybrid that you can drive on pure electric and have some performance, this is really cool. And my favorite part of the electric performance part is if we swipe our screen over, we have charge and hold. So if we click charge, it's gonna keep charging up the battery because you know sometimes you run out and you want more. And it's nice to have that control. Yeah, that's what the Chrysler Pacifica didn't have, which we really wanted. That's right. And then it's got the electricity hold button, which will make you not use your electricity, force you into gas. Which is also nice to have, because then you can save it for when you want it. Yeah, like if you're cruising on the highway, probably not the best time to be using only electricity. Exactly. So we did review the Volvo S60 T8 Polestar Engineered. Yes, the exact same version of this, except in sedan form. So we were the first ones to break the news that there would be a wagon officially. So now we are finally driving it, except they don't offer the Polestar in a wagon, unfortunately. We just got official confirmation that there's actually going to be a Polestar wagon. And the coolest part about driving that one, it was still kind of like a pre-prod at the time. It wasn't like the actual final spec. So that one had 20 inch wheels and we have 19 inch wheels on this one. So let's start with the looks because it'll be pretty quick. This is a wagon, the other one was a sedan. Which one do you like more? Obviously the wagon. I like the shape of the wagon more. I really like the taillights on the wagon, but I also really, really love the taillights on the sedan, but I have to go team wagon. Obviously. I really do like the wheel design on this. I'm not upset that they're not 20s. I think the actual design looks really good. And they're Polestar engineered wheels. However, these don't have the gold valve stem covers like the one we drove had. Yeah, so I don't know if they just deleted it or they didn't go ahead with that because it was the pre-prod. So if you bought one of these and you have those valve stem caps, let us know. And then we also have gold Brembo slash Polestar engineered brake calipers. They look so good. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for the Volvo V60 T8 Polestar engineered? Well, if it wasn't so cold, it would be the Pure Contact LS. And since it is freezing outside, the Viking Contact 7. And since this is the Polestar engineered, we have a white badge in the front. Which is super cool. And Polestar engineered is different than Polestar because Polestar is the new fully electric vehicle that we have not driven yet. Well, it's a fully electric company now. So yeah. it's a separate company from Volvo and Volvo is still using Polestar engineered things, but Polestar itself has cars called Polestar 1 and Polestar 2. Yeah, people have been driving it. It looks very cool. I would like to try it myself one day. Yeah, I mean, one of them is pretty much a supercar. It's like $200,000. So yeah, that would be fun to drive. And like the other Volvos, we've got that cool double fender flare kind of thing that indents. The wagon looks pretty much like every other wagon from the side view from Volvo. And then if we move to the back, Exhaust tips. Exhaust tips work for this because they're not real real, but they're kind of real. 2020 real. Yeah, that's a pass in my books. And we've got Polestar written on it as well. That is cool. Overall, I think this is my favorite looking wagon from Volvo because you can't get a T8 Polestar engineered in the V90. And I think the cross country looks cooler because it's got bigger wheels. That's fair. I, I really like the look of that. That felt so cool. The battle wagon? Yes, yes. All right. And as you can probably tell, winter has just started in Canada. 
So it's really hard to film, it's really cold. We washed the car, by the time we got to our film location, it was already dirty. Yeah, so filming in the winter sucks. Uh, thank you guys for subscribing. Please continue to subscribe throughout the winter. We are gonna continue to try and do videos, but it, it just sucks, it's cold. <laughs> so let me talk about a few more interior things before I get you in the driver's seat. This has a super amazing 360 camera, which I absolutely love. Very high res, very easy to see where you are. But just like the other Volvos, you can't have your reverse camera and 360 camera at the same time. Yeah, that does suck. And this does have Apple CarPlay. It does have Android Auto. But what's weird about Apple CarPlay is it'll say navigation through Apple CarPlay, phone through Apple CarPlay, and then Apple CarPlay at the very bottom. And if you go to something else, it gets rid of that. So they have like a bunch of extra stuff that you can't even use when you're hooked up to Apple CarPlay. Oh, that's weird. And it does have satellite radio, not rewinding, but I've got a new test for satellite radio to see how easy it is to use. What's that? This press unit has 5,000 kilometers on it, so 5,000 kilometers worth of journalists driving it. All right. It has zero favorites saved. <laughs> like, it, not just satellite radio, just anything. Yeah, that's how bad it is. If nobody can set a favorite after 5,000 kilometers of driving, you know it's bad. Every Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, they all have favorites. Yeah, fair enough, all right. New test. Okay. Journalists. I got my eye on you. Yeah, here. they're all going to start setting favorites now. I, I got to set a favorite you quick. Just called, just you called out the entire <laughs> Canadian community. <laughs> and then like other Volvos, our gauge setup is pretty simple. We got a couple different looks that we can do. We can get rid of map in the middle. We do have a head-up display, which works very well as well. And that is an option on this one. And you know how sometimes when we get into cars after a while, we're really confused by the infotainment? Yes, this is one of those. I was totally confused, but within 15 minutes, I got back into it and I am no longer stressed. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't find where my heated steering wheel was and then once I found my heated seat button, it was right there and it made perfect sense. And I haven't noticed any lag in the system like we have in previous versions. Yeah, and I think they updated that with this generation of car, so great job. Then what this one also has that all the other Volvos have is the Gothenburg sound experience. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I absolutely love it. Definitely my favorite, easiest to use, impressive sound system, but for listening to YouTube videos or people talking, <laughs> super weird. Yeah, well, like, concert halls aren't really meant for that, so. Yeah, but like, it's, it, like, I watched our video and it sounds like we were in a concert hall, uh, but in a car. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Then we've got a driving performance button, which I really like because you can see where all the power goes electrically. And it looks like from here, the electricity only powers the rear wheels. Yeah, so there is actually no drive shaft to the back wheels, even though this is all wheel drive. So it is only purely electric through motors in the back. Very interesting. Maybe we should get more into it with you behind the driver's seat. All right, so straight into Polestar engineering mode and brake boost, here we go. You may have noticed that we're not moving because we're on snow. But it's very controllable. It is. It's safe. It is, definitely Volvo safe. And now we are gonna switch into pure, which is actually pretty much rear wheel drive because it's full electric and drift. <laughs> you can actually get the back end to step out like quite a bit. But you can't get it to step out in Polestar mode. No, you can't. Only after fiddling around. And we also turned off the ESC Sport, so yeah. But only after fiddling around, we realized that the electricity in the back is going to kick it out. So you need to be hybrid. Well, no, you drift. need to be pure electric. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> it is. But at least it has that as a redeeming quality. Oh yeah, like drift mode is pure, which is electric, which is hilarious. And you might not get that out of a T6, which just has a turbo. That's true. And just as a reminder, T5, T6, T8 is their like C43, C63, C300 ranking system. Sort of, not really. But okay, T8 is supercharged, turbocharged, hybrid. Yes. T6 is supercharged, turbocharged. Yes, twin charged. And then T5 is just turbo. Correct. So write that down in your notes, people. All right, enough snow fun. Let's do a regular launch. It's okay. It's definitely okay. <laughs> Fake numbers. Yeah, so it definitely doesn't feel like it has almost 500 pound-feet of torque, which is my biggest problem with this. If you advertise those numbers, I want it to feel like that. That's it. The cool part is that you can plug it in and use electricity, like I said earlier. So I think that is its biggest redeeming quality. So again, don't think of this like a sports car because you will be disappointed. But on with handling, handling is actually really good. We can't go to Cliche Corner today because the conditions are absolutely treacherous. So in order for us to not die, we are just driving on regular roads today. However, we are able to test the Ulins dampers and I've been to Germany twice now. So I can say that this is a very good Swedish company, Ulins. Ulins, okay, because you got ragged on the last video. Yeah, yeah, because I just, I said I went to Germany. I you, you never said it was a German company. I didn't, I just been to Germany. I've been to Germany once so I can say Ulins. Ulins. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've been to Bahamas. They are definitely great uh, dampers. Oh, yeah. See? Uh, Oolins. I can say that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the ones jumping to conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> Jump to conclusions. Yeah. It is kind of stiff, though. It is stiffer than any other Volvo I've driven, but it's not as stiff as, like, even a C43. And then we also have adjustable shocks under the hood. Yeah, manually adjustable, which is really cool. But kind of useless in a car like this because it's not fast enough. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have that Polestar front strut bar as well, but more on the drivetrain because that's kind of the main thing of this. So the transmission is an eight-speed auto and I still think it totally sucks. So I'm just gonna floor it from drive and finally we're off. It's just a big delay and it sucks. Have you noticed that it kind of holds the revs? It does. And I think it's because there's too many things going on. And it's just like, I don't know, everything's still spooling. Yeah, like the boost is still spooling <laughs> into the supercharger and the gas battery is like, yo, I still got this. Like, I don't know what's okay, going on. Okay, but let's try that again. And instead of D, let me click down to B. Okay, so explain what B is. Brake regeneration. Felt a little bit better, but maybe I was just in the right part of the power band. So this does have regenerative braking when you let off, and then also when you hit the brakes. Our biggest complaint about the one we drove before was that the brake pedal felt super weird. How does it feel in this one? It feels better. I think they actually improved it from the one that we drove, the S60. You did not complain to me about the brake pedal. I had to ask you what you thought, which in my mind shows it's not as bad as you think it was. Yeah, absolutely. And you can also change it to non-dynamic brakes in your individual mode. Now we're in non-dynamic brakes. Do you feel anything different? I feel pretty normal. But it still feels the same as the other one here. Polestar, engineered. Yeah, they feel pretty normal in both of them. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't even feel a difference between either. Acceptable. I think it's because we talked to the engineers and they yeah, yeah. took our notes to heart. <laughs> but back to that transmission, I got one last complaint, the paddles. They're totally useless because of how bad the transmission shifts. So it doesn't actually let me do anything. Like, it barely wants to downshift. It takes forever for it to actually react to what I've clicked. And you can see your gears in the gauge cluster, but when I first put it to B mode, I clicked on the paddle because I thought that was the, the degree of brake regeneration. Oh, that makes sense. Turns out it was just the gear I was in, so yeah, you can yeah. be in like D3 or B3. It is kind of confusing. Yeah, because right now I have like minus B5 plus. <laughs> There's a lot going on in there. But the paddles themselves actually feel great. Like the clickiness of them, it feels satisfying. It's probably the best plastic paddle. Absolutely. And since I'm talking about that, the steering wheel, everything feels normal about it in terms of like overall handling and daily driving. There's no weird M performance stuff. Everything feels great. And then we've got our gloss black buttons, which we didn't have in the XC40, I think. That's right. But we do like the gloss black buttons for some reason. Don't, uh, don't ask me why. They just look fancy. As much as I hate gloss black. And then we still have our buttons on the steering wheel for our pilot assist, which works absolutely fantastic. The more I use it, the more I like it. I told you, it was really good you, when I first started. You are correct. Right. And I guess the more other systems I've driven, the more I just want this. And one day we will do the lane keep assist adaptive cruise test one day. Yeah, like 10 years probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna get a bunch of old- Do you guys know how hard that is to organize? We're gonna get a bunch of vintage 2020 cars and <laughs> yeah. see how they roll down the space highway. <laughs> Pretty much. And moving on with the rest of this interior, the actual shifter itself. We had a crystal shifter in the S60. This one does not have one. And you still have to double tap to get into drive or reverse, and it's the most painful thing ever. Let us know if the first time you drove a Volvo like this, you ended up in neutral a hundred times. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is my nails on a chalkboard. This I, is really annoying. Some other company did it correctly. I think it might've been BMW or something. I don't, I don't remember, but this is just, I don't like this at all. And then we've got our cool start stop button, which is all crystallized with the drive mode button. We have two cup holders and they fit small cups of McDonald's and they're stacked. That's pretty good. We've got like no room in our armrest. We've got very comfortable seats, which are very adjustable. However, no massage. Visor test. Okay, so we did the visor test in the live stream. Yeah, so have your notifications turned on because you will know that we already know that this fails. But back to those seats, you're right. They're very, very comfortable. I really like these seats. I like this pattern. Yeah, they look cool. Not, um, not a, weird that they kept the uh, IKEA flag. Can't say that anymore. <laughs> I can say whatever I want. And most obviously, we've got gold seat belts. Yes, they are not yellow. They are gold. Yeah, they're not yellow. They're definitely gold. <laughs> and how do you like the back seat room? It's okay. I wish there was a little bit more. And since this is a wagon, we should probably do the box test. Box test! One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. We couldn't double stack because there's not enough room. 
And just to wrap up the overall interior, it's still just like every other Volvo, very high quality, very nice materials. And this Volvo has an awesome system of magic wipers. The water doesn't spread at all, it just shoots out at the perfect time. Yeah, it's actually better than Mercedes magic wiper system, I think. So I guess that's it. Let's finish it off with the price. It's actually a lot of money. $82,300 to start. Canadian. This one is $84,350. Yeah, that is a lot. That is a lot of money. And I will explain exactly why that is a lot of money. The C63 sedan starts at $76,000, about $10,000 less than this. Mm -hmm. The M3 sedan starts at $77,000. Yes, those are both sedans. So we have the C43 wagon in Canada. Guess how much that is? $63,000? $60,000 to start. Okay, but none of those are electrified. Exactly. So that's why I said... If you think of this like a sports car, you will be disappointed because all of those cars are objectively better. Okay, but this is kind of more hipster. It is. If you show up somewhere in this, you get to explain to people why it's so good. Yeah, the coolest part of this is being able to plug it in and just drive on pure electric as much as you can. That is 100% the best part of this car. And being one of the few people with a Volvo on the road. There you go. Every time you see one, are you a little bit excited? Yeah, yeah. Oh, You're I like, definitely look. Yo. I'm like, oh, there's Thor. <laughs> so let us know what you think of Volvos. Is it worth it to get a Polestar engineered or should you just go right to Polestar? Are you excited for our upcoming Polestar reviews? Hopefully, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash The Straight Pipes. Join our YouTube membership and check out Teespring for some sick swag or drip. Whatever the kids have been calling it these days. Someone told me to call it drip, so I've said that a couple times now. <laughs>